Hey YouTube, so today we're going to talk about are you a magnet for toxic friends? Some people are saying that, you know, no matter where they go, they can move from city to city, they can go from state to state, and no matter where they go, what they do, they can change jobs, that these negative toxic friends and people just keep attaching to them and they don't know what's going on. Some people say that they do know what's going on. They say, so Myra, I'm an empath. You know, I feel deeply the needs and the emotions of other people and these negative toxic friends, they see me and they grab hold of me and won't let me go because they see that I'm such a good person. Well, that could be true. I too was a person who complained about all the negative friends. Oh, the friends I have suck, not all of them, but the friends I have suck. The people I'm meeting, I don't like them. They just seem to be manipulators. They just seem to be users. But I have to take a step back to see, is it true? Am I just a magnet for these toxic people? Or do I play a role in it? So if you want to hear more, stick around. And I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. So regarding being a magnet, I feel like this. Um, when you When you say that, I do believe if you have some qualities, such as if you, you might want to be known as a good person, you might overextend yourself for people. You probably don't stand up for yourself. Or if you do stand up for yourself, sometimes you wait so long that the person has already gotten in the habit of misusing you and so you might feel like hey i haven't stood up for myself this long why start now and that's not a, gr a great thing to do but there could be reasons why you keep getting all these negative people now I i'm not going to minimize the fact that there are negative people we know that there are toxic people in this world people that you need to cut off right now if you've not already done so just to get out of your life because they don't mean you any good i know that i'm not going there but what I want to say is, I believe that toxic people, all of us encounter these people. I believe what separates a healthy individual from an unhealthy individual, meaning that if I am healthy and someone toxic comes to me, once I start seeing the red flags, maybe they're borrowing money and they're not paying, paying it back. Or I see that they're nasty to other people in customer service and they're cursing at them and degrading them, saying how stupid they are. If I see that they're real nasty to other people or they're gossiping behind other people's back, that lets me know, hmm, I don't want to be friends with this person. But when you're unhealthy, I think you can see those red flags and you start to ignore those red flags. You might even think that, oh, you can change this person or, oh, this person is a gossip. Oh, they steal money from the store, but I'm sure they won't steal money from me. But no, these things that you have to say, hey, no, nah, this is someone I don't want to allow to be attached to me. And I've also found when I was more unhealthy and I'm still working on me, I'm not going to lie. But uh, when I was un unhealthy in my relationships to friends, I would see these red flags and un unconsciously I would like, gravitate to it like, oh, okay, this person wants to be my friend. Yeah, she's a gossip. Oh, yeah, this person is a thief. Oh, yeah, this person is a liar. But I'm sure they won't be like that to me. And I'm like, ooh, best friend, best friend, best friend. Like I said, some of this might have been unconscious. But as I look back now, it was like, wow, this person showed me who they were real early in the relationship. Relationship. Why didn't I just push them away instead of just like, no, come, friend, friend, toxic, crazy, manipulative. No, you have to take responsibility for what you bring into the relationships. And that's what I had to do. So my thing is, what role do you play in the in, in these toxic people? Like I said, we all encounter them, but the healthy person is, uh, I believe, quicker to cut off that relationship to end it where the person that's more unhealthy with, uh, for whatever reason, may not cut the relationship off until it's just so bad that it has to be ended or that the toxic person ends up cutting off the relationship, you know? And what I've had to learn is just because someone wants to be my friend or enter, insert themselves into my life does not mean I have to accept that person, you know? I, you have to get to the point where you're saying, hey, I want you to be my friend. You're not just here because you inserted yourself in my life and now I'm forced to keep you to be a nice person. No. So that goes again to what's your role? Uh, standing up for yourself. It's not all the time that we're getting negative people. It's that you have different 
boundaries, what you feel is acceptable versus not acceptable. But if you don't say what those boundaries are to other people, they're not going to know. They can't read our mind. So let's say if someone wants to borrow, I don't know, borrow my couch because they feel I have two couches. Someone did this, by the way. But the thing is, I'm saying, oh, this person is a horrible user. I can't believe. Why would someone ask that? And yeah, it's true. That is a bit much to ask. But the thing is not so much as why that person asked. The thing is, is that I and you should be able to say, hey, borrowing the couch is not something I'm comfortable with. Borrowing some sugar, yeah, some flour, yes. But my couch, no. So we have to let people know where we stand. You know, when we're in that unhealthy mode of saying that, oh, everyone is so toxic, we feel like, oh, they, if they're a good person, they shouldn't have asked me that. Oh, if they're a good person, they shouldn't have done that. But we're playing, in my opinion, a victim, whether it's consciously or unconscious. It it's comes off as a victim, meaning that, oh, oh, I'm so good. I, I would never ask a person this. I would never... I uh, do this to a person. I can't understand why other people behave as they do. Oh, weren't they? They're not cultured. Didn't they? Didn't their parents tell them this and this? No, we, to be honest, we're not as good as we think we are. And we're setting ourselves up for failure when we're just pointing, you're the bad person. You're the bad friend. You're the bad friend. I'm the good friend. I do all this for you. You haven't done what I wanted. And so you're not as good as me. That's what it really comes off. And I had to even say that about myself. So this message was to me first. So yeah, we have to say, hey, look, I'm not a victim. I played a role in this. What were the red flags that I ignored? Did I not stand up for myself? Did I not say, hey, this is not okay. You can't treat me like this. You can't do me like this. This is what I want in this relationship. This is what I don't want in this relationship. And are we doing that in a timely manner? Also, it, uh, you know, what, what is the fear of standing up for yourself? Are you fearing that you're going to lose the relationship? Is that why you're allowing people to take advantage? Because what I've known about toxic people, they don't treat everyone the same way. They they treat some people with respect. Why? Because those people demand that respect and, the, and they're showing self-love saying, hey, it's not okay. You can't do me this way. And But then I've noticed that toxic people will treat their victims, well, not, not their victims. I want to get out of that. They'll treat their target in a very disrespectful way. But I noticed about the target, they wouldn't stand up for themselves. And that's why they kept, uh, you know, going through that type of relationship and it could seem like oh you're a magnet for these toxic people and you're a target yes they see your good traits and that's why they come after you but it's up to you to say no you might have seen my good traits you might uh think you can take advantage because you see i'm doing you know i'm nice and i like to help people but it's up to me to say no you don't get to take advantage of me so no one can attract themselves to you know attach themselves to you unless you are allowing it so that's the role that we play in this also is it um lack of self-love will keep us from saying to people what it is that we want, thinking that we're not valuable, we don't mean enough. It's okay to say, you know, what you want in these relationships. Also, going back to being that victim, uh, you know, sometimes you can be on the phone with a person and they're just telling you about how everyone they meet sucks and no one treats them nice and everyone takes money from them and doesn't repay. Everyone uh, throws them out of the um, house when they need a place to stay and nobody is good. It's like, no, wait, wait a minute. What role are you playing in this? You know, uh, it reminds me of Robert Greene. Uh, he's the author of the 48 Laws of Power. Uh, one, one of his laws of power is, is to avoid the unlucky and the, uh, yes, to avoid the unlucky. He says that there are people that are infectors. An infector is someone who can actually make you feel good about yourself or to make you feel bad. And I'm going to talk about the ones that make you feel bad. These infectious people, they constantly go on and on about how people have misused them, how everyone sucks and they're such an empath and no, and no one is doing uh, returning them good and everyone just gives them evil for the good that they've done but they're not realizing how they sound on the phone you come across as a victim you come across as someone that just can't get, um, get, get a lucky break and you might 
think that some people are mean and toxic because they're cutting you off. Because people don't want to be around people that's unlucky. If on the phone or in person, all you can tell me is how no everybody in this city sucks and um, everything is just going to hell, I'm going to start looking at you. First, I might feel sorry for you and might, oh, okay want to be helpful but then i said the common denominator in the story with with this type of person is everybody sucks but this is the common denominator if the person is telling the story it's like so what part are you playing so i uh, you know pe people that's healthy want to get away from that infector you know i i don't want to be around you if nobody else is treating you right what what about you makes people you know, you a target for that type of behavior. You know, if all your relationships is unlucky, I'm going to look at you and think, well, this relationship is going to be unlucky and unhealthy because apparently you have not learned to sustain a healthy relationship. So why would I want to attach myself to you? So just to go back and say, uh, one other thing about the, the victim, I find, find sometimes with religious people, uh, they'll say, oh, you know, it's because I'm attracting these bad people because they're not saved and they don't love Yah, they don't love the Lord as I do, or some more uh, spiritual people just say, you know, they're not empaths, you know, something happened in their childhood, you know, they're just not on my level. But the thing is, what you're truly saying, in my opinion, is that I'm the good person, I'm that good friend. I give so much of myself. I My flaws are very minimal, if any, but the other people, they're the bad, they're the less spiritual, they're the less religious. And so these are the kind of things that they do. I know I've been guilty of that because someone probably told me, oh, they were going, going to take me grocery shopping when I didn't have a car and she didn't show up. And so I started saying to myself, oh, she not really saved. She don't really love the Lord because if she did, she would have um, fulfilled her uh fulfilled her, the, the thing she told me she was going to do for me but the real thing is is that I thought that I was righteous I was self-righteous in that situation but yeah she could have fulfilled her promise to me but if I was really righteous I would have went to that individual and said hey what happened you said you were going to take me I was waiting on you what's going on I would have said something to that person and then if she was like oh yeah whatever I could have said well hey you know if you don't want to take me you could have told me I would have appreciated that I could have found another way you know in the future if you don't want to do it just let me know up front not where I can make other plans you know I could have said something but I just said back oh no she not say she don't really love the Lord see I was making myself a victim so to end this, the only way that uh, you will stop having these people attach themselves to you is to stand up for yourself, love yourself, tell people what you want, what you don't want, what is acceptable for you. Because as long as you can say that, oh, I'm the empath, oh, they are just attracted to me, you're going to forever be in the same predicament saying, woe is me, and nobody's going to want to stay around you too long if they're healthy, because who wants to be around the negative person that's always complaining about how everybody sucks? Because in the end, if you're saying everybody sucks, you attract all these bad people. If I do something that you don't like, I'm sure you'll turn around, even if you don't address that situation with me and start telling everybody how I suck and how I'm just unhealthy and how I'm toxic, but truly, you have some toxicity in you if this if, if, if you are that person because you you're not dealing with why you continue to get into the same type of relationships thank you for listening